the British Museum, the British Museum, mm -hmm. you know, the most prestigious museum in the world, our most prestigious museum, has decided to airbrush the past by pulling down the bust of its founding father, Sir Hans Sloan. This is the man that founded this museum. He lived way back in the 18th century, 300 years ago, and what an idiot he didn't foresee that 300 years hence we would disapprove of his links to the slave trade so quite rightly of course the British Museum is going to pull down his mm. bust and therefore uh, come out smelling of roses because it won't be linked with slavery this is crazy isn't it uh, Brendan it's it's crazy and pathetic it, it, it's like a spasm of self-loathing has gripped all of our major institutions you know the British Museum I mean I'm not even being particularly patriotic here, but the British Museum is the greatest museum in the world because it tells the story of humanity in the most extraordinary way through all these artifacts from around the world, some of which were plundered, some of which were got by, uh, you know, more, more legal means. It is the greatest museum in the world. There's, there's no question about that. And now what they've done, they've got this bust, They've actually taken it off its pedestal and put it in under this shining light with a note saying the man who founded this museum was a real rotter. <laughs> and so, so basically what, they, what they're now doing, they're now saying to everyone who goes into the museum, they're now saying this museum was founded in sin. This was founded by a horrible person. This was founded by a sinful, nasty, slave-owning person. And it's just this orgy of self-loathing that is gripping the guardians of British culture, and I think it's incredibly dangerous for British culture. I think it's a guardian with a small C for that once, but it could be with a, with a big G. Uh, there's statues of Ramesses and various pharaohs in yeah. the British Museum. Mm. I, I, I seem to recall they had something to do with slavery. <clears throat> Well, yeah, they, you know, they were pretty nasty people too. But the logical conclusion of all this is, you know, what is going to remain in the British Museum? Uh, you know, the pharaohs, the, 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 the barbarians from, you know, even before the pharaohs' time, mm. pe people who did exceptionally cruel things, really horrific things. You know, if we're going to be consistent, or if the British Museum is going to be consistent, they will take out all of this stuff, or the, even worse, they will attach these lecturing notes telling us, you know, this was a bad person, this was a good person. They're, they're actually destroying their own mission, because the British Museum, like so many of, of those other great institutions, was founded in the ideals of the Enlightenment, the idea that you could explain the story of humanity in a really clear way to as many people as possible. Now what they're doing, they're creating a situation where they will become this kind of self-loathing institution which wags its finger at everyone who walks in the door and says, Britain, Britain is an evil country, this museum is, is an evil place, <laughs> and you all must atone for the sins of... But if they really want to atone, why don't, why don't they hand back all the Ramesses, you know, all the Pharaoh stuff? They should hand it back to Egypt yeah, and they, the marbles. Yeah, what, but they're not that woke. And by, the, and by the way, those guys at the uh, British Museum, they hang on to the yeah. artifacts for grim life, all don't they? All this stuff's been plundered from all over the world. We, they should yeah. hand it all back. Well, you know, I, I would say don't tempt them. I mean, that, that will be the next <laughs> yes. step. They'll be posting all this stuff back to Greece and, and Africa and all these other countries where some of it was actually stolen from. But yeah, but we saved it, actually, a lot of the stuff. I mean, look at what happened in Iraq, yeah, that's in that's Palmyra, true. where they destroyed Absolutely. it. But the point, the point is that yeah. we're sort of drifting off the central yeah. point yeah. here. The point is, this is a museum, not just any museum. Mm -hmm. that, as you said, Brendan, the most prestigious, uh, respected museum in the world presumably staffed by a lot of respected historians who now see that it's a perfectly good idea to sort of airbrush the past. Oh, slavery, we don't like that. Let's pretend it didn't happen. What kind of a historian or a museum goes about its business in that ludicrous way? But it's so patronising too, because the undertone to all of this is that the public has to be constantly reminded that slavery was a bad thing. Now, the, the point is... The vast majority of people in this country know for a fact that slavery was one of the great crimes in history. It was dreadful. It was awful. We learn about it at school. We watch films about it. We read books about it. We know it was a horrific moment in human history. We don't need these institutions constantly lecturing us about how terrible it was. So there's a really, uh, there's a paternalistic undertone where these institutions are uh, presuming the responsibility to lecture the stupid masses about slavery. So 
it's a double whammy. Firstly, they're patronising the people who are going into the museum and kind of telling them off for being so ignorant about slavery. <laughs> Plus, they're undermining their own mission. Their mission is not to tell us how horrible Britain was. Their mission is to tell us the story of humankind. Well, they should be neutral, shouldn't they? They should just be yeah, neutral. Well, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, the mo getting moralistic about things yeah. that happened mm -hmm. 300 years ago or thousands of years ago. Oh, they didn't behave in the way that we would like it uh, up here in <laughs> Hampstead in 2021. Mm -hmm. That's a disgrace. It's just banal, isn't it? It's, it's, it's banal and creepy and strange. And, and the whole, you would think that if anyone understood that human behavior changes over time, it would be people who run the British Museum. Yes. Like they, they are putting, they put up pharaohs and, and savages and all, si all kinds of crazy people in their museum. They should know for a fact that values change over time, morality changes over time, politics changes over time. 300 years ago, people held beliefs and did things that we today were, think were reprehensible. Everybody knows that. The point is that you can't judge people in the past by the standards of 2020 because nobody would be left standing. Everyone in that era had views that we find reprehensible. And you can't judge history or historic figures by the values that we hold in 2020. And you can't judge them at all if the statue's not there. At least if the statue was there, you could put a plaque and say, this guy, you know, made this museum, but also he made a lot of money from slavery. Yeah. So then it puts it Absolutely. in that person's yeah. mind. Do, do that by all means. And if yeah. you're offended by it, grow up. You know, uh, that's that's a pathetic virtue signalling item number one. Let's move on to pathetic <laughs> virtue signalling item number two. The National Trust, Trust has been belting out tweets, uh, alerting its members to uh, the article facts and buildings that had drum roll links to slavery God. and uh, and thousands of uh, traditional national trust members are saying if you keep lecturing us like this we're all going to leave yeah. what how what madness lies there uh, it, it's this it's this ongoing it's like boris boris johnson was right today when he said there's this cringing embarrassment about british history and this wetness about british history and we're all now expected to look back at the past with this kind of horror and to see Britain as just this long line of historic crimes. Everything in British history was awful. All the National Trust buildings are awful. Everything in the British Museum is I mean, awful. we ended the slave trade. It was our country yeah, we that were led the first the way, country yeah. in the Western world to end and slavery. And stopped slave ships, arrested the, you know, and freed them. But it's this, exactly, you know, what people forget are the wonderful things in British history, which actually includes a lot of the National Trust stuff, and it includes the British Museum, and it includes the British Library, which this week uh, a, a number of people who work at the British Library have put out a statement saying that we've all got to think more about white supremacy and our role in white supremacy. It's like all of the key institutions of British cultural life have been colonised by crazy, woke lunatics mm. who want us all to constantly whip ourselves on the back for events that happened before any of us were born and which we have nothing to do with. It's a kind of psychotic approach to history, which most ordinary people will think is just nuts.